So today we're going to be using some Faber-Castell gelatos and some liquid pearls. These guys are oldies but such goodies. Now let's create our card base. We're going to start with um, a piece of white thick cardstock untextured and we're going to make it about the size of a C6 card then trim it down to um, smaller so we can put it on the card. I'm starting with my gelatos here. Right now I'm really just colouring in um, straight from gelato to card. There's so many ways you can use gelatos. Today we're going to be um, putting lots of pigment onto our paper and spritzing that with water to make a watercolour effect. You really want to embrace your inner five-year-old here. It's just like using a smooth slick crayon, these guys. Once you've got your colours here, here I'm using more, um, I guess, summer sunset tones. I'm just going to spritz it all with water, a nice generous amount, but not too much so that your cardstock doesn't start warping. But as you can see, it's, this is why it's important that your white card is quite thick um, and nice and strong and durable to take a little bit of water. You want to uh, tap off any excess water, as you can see that's dripping down below. And then I'm just going to get my finger and smooth out the colours a little bit more to make it a little bit more freeform and look like it's really dripping down the page. As you can see, some of the colours are blending really nicely and I actually like that effect. I think it looks really cool and makes a funky kind of background. This is only the background to our card, so it really doesn't have to be too perfect. We just want to get some good colour coverage on there. Once you're happy with your result, you can leave it to dry, but I really want to speed up that process, so I've got my heat gun here with me, and we're just going to dry that um, up, and it should only take less than a minute, really. Now I'm comparing the size of my finished piece to the card I'm going to use and I can see down the bottom that it overhangs a little bit so we just want to trim that down nice and straight with our paper trimmer again. Then putting your paper trimmer away and bringing out that cuddle bug, we're going to cut out some balloons. Here I'm using a die set from a shop called Paper Roses, I'll link them down below. And I'm just doing this on a bold red cardstock and again on a lighter pink cardstock. What we're going to do is we're going to layer our balloons on top of one another and the red will be like the shadow, the harsh drop shadow of a background amidst um, the raised pink balloons. As you can see here, so I've double sided taped the red balloons down straight onto my background and I'm now stamping my sentiment, the sweetest, with a silver pigment ink. And here I'm using my um, Catchy Crafts, which is just like the, the Friskers one really, stamping block and that helps me line it up nice and straight. Now I'm going to emboss this to make it even more cool. So I've got my clear embossing powder, putting on a generous amount, tapping off the excess and using my heat gun to set that into place. And as you can see here, it's getting some nice shine and solid silver colour. It's really awesome, hey? Now we're going to add on our pink balloons. Now I found this little, uh, I guess, springy boingy thing um, at a random craft fair and I thought this card would be a great place to use this product. As you can see, the large balloon just covers it so it makes it look really nice and hidden. I'm going to place it right there so the red balloon kind of looks like a, a harsh drop shadow to the pink balloon and it really adds to that depth and dimension to the card. For the other balloons, I'm just going to add um, some foam mounting tape to, to create that dimension there. Finally, to add to the front of my card, I'm going to make it personalised to my grandma. So I'm just using a gold shimmery uh, gel pen and I'm just writing happy birthday to the sweetest grandma in my nicest hand lettering. Then adding the final touches to our card, we're going to add that elegance with the liquid pearls. I've got liquid pearl colours that match quite closely to the um, Faber-Castell gelatos I used and what I'm going to do is we're just going to create like a shower curtain of dots and you can be like super liberal with your application of dots. I find that the more that you put the more amazing that it looks but I'm going to make each of my dots kind of like a different size so you can see I'm making some really large dots and some really just little speckles of dots. And I'm going to go and do this with all the other colours. 
and as you go you kind of want to cross over the borders I guess of each color a little bit so that it does look a little bit more organic and kind of has that vibe that all these pearls are showering down from the top of the card. Once you're satisfied with your results you can just leave that on the side to dry. It should be dry within a couple of hours but I like to give it a nice, a nice day to air dry. Now moving on to our envelope that I said we're going to learn how to line in this video. All you need to do is you need to grab the envelope you're going to use for your final card and trace the shape onto the lining piece. So here I'm using the same pink card stock that I use for the pink balloons on the card. So it's all matching and it looks really cool. Then you want to cut out this shape and what you want to do is you want to um, trace one centimeter inside of that shape. So here I've already cut along the sides one centimeter, one centimeter off and I'm just using my exacto knife here to create those slightly tapered edges um, that is on the flap of the envelope. So just trimming it down on all sides. I already did the top and the bottom and I've done the sides and now I'm just doing the final tapered part. You want to make a piece that's smaller than the envelope uh, size but follows the shape of the envelope so that you can actually insert it inside the envelope and it looks nice and cohesive. Ta-da! We're almost done but as you can see in this particular envelope the corners are rounded but my liner still has straight sharp corners but I want to match the rounded corners to make it look more united I guess. And so I'm just going to go ahead and use this cute corner punch that I have and that creates um, more elegant corners to my liner. It's important to leave a space at the top because often, especially if you're mailing this envelope, that will be where the gluey part is to stick the envelope closed. Finally, we want to create um, the crease in the liner just to follow the crease in the envelope so that it opens and closes as nicely and neatly as possible. And then once you've done that, all you need to do is use a glue stick or double-sided tape to tape down just the flap. You don't even have to do the inside. If the flap is stuck down, then the liner will stay in. Then when you've got your liquid pearls all nice and dry, we can attach the centerpiece to the center of a plain white C6 card. And grabbing your double-sided tape or glue stick once again, all you gotta do is glue up the back of that piece and slap it right on the center of your plain white card to create a beautiful card.